I'm on Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas this week, and this was supposed to be a three-day cruise to the Bahamas over Labor Day weekend, but it's turned into a five-day Western Caribbean cruise at a three-day price, thanks to Hurricane Dorian. For our 49th cruise, I had wanted to experience the fun new water slides at Royal Caribbean's private island, Coco Cay. But we just weren't able to get there with Hurricane Dorian heading straight for the Bahamas. So the ship headed west to Mexico and we visited Costa Maya and Cozumel instead. The night before the cruise, we stayed at the Holiday Inn near the Port of Miami, one of our favorite Miami hotels because it's just about the closest hotel to the port, and it's also right across the street from the Bayside Marketplace, where you'll find lots of restaurants, bars, entertainment, and shopping. Miami was experiencing typical late summer Florida weather, Thunder showers. So, ironically, the worst weather we saw during our entire vacation was days before Hurricane Dorian showed up. It was a few hours before we were scheduled to board the ship. But after a heavy rain that morning, we got lucky. The weather cleared up just in time for embarkation. Navigator of the Seas was docked at Terminal A in Miami. That's a brand new state-of-the-art cruise ship terminal that just opened less than a year ago. It's really impressive to see how they've sped up the embarkation process. From the time we got out of our lift to the time we were walking on the ship was probably 10 minutes. If Royal Caribbean offered me $100,000 to come up with ways to shave another minute off the process... I'm not sure I could. It was super efficient. Every other cruise line needs to send someone over to Terminal A to study the state of the art in how to get thousands of passengers onto a cruise ship quickly. As the ship pulled away from the dock, you can see in this time-lapse video how much the weather had improved. Here's a real-time view out the left side as we passed all the expensive mansions on Palm Island and Star Island. I really like sailing out of the Port of Miami. It's quick and easy, and the views are fantastic. Just before you get out to open water, you are treated to this spectacular view of Miami's world-famous South Beach. Navigator of the Seas is a really interesting ship because Royal Caribbean recently invested $115 million into renovating her. When you're up on Deck 11, which is where the pool deck is, it feels like a brand new ship. They totally brought the pool deck of this 17-year-old cruise ship up to the standards of today's newest ships. In fact, in some ways, what they've done up here on Deck 11 is better than what you'll find on a lot of brand new ships. There are two pools here in this midship area of the pool deck, and up towards the forward end of Deck 11, you'll find an adults-only pool known as the Solarium. My wife and I are in our 60s now, and we generally like a nice relaxing cruise, so a day bed at the adults-only solarium pool was our favorite hangout on Navigator of the Seas. But if you've got kids or if you're looking for a party, which is a large percentage of people who go on three- and four-day cruises, you'll love the scene out at the midship pool. The ship is perfect for Caribbean cruising, where it may be 80 or 90 degrees outside. The pools are not deep for swimming. They are designed for people to be able to stand up in with their heads above the water. This is fantastic on a hot day in the Caribbean. Bring your drink with you and stay cool in the pool with your family and friends. Up on Deck 12, one deck above the pools, you'll find all sorts of little cabanas and day beds and hammocks to lounge around in. It's all first come, first served, and there's no additional charge for you to use them. The new bar concept at the pool, which you'll start seeing on a lot of other ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet in the coming years, is called the Lime and Coconut. 
It actually covers three levels, and I especially liked the way that it was all lit up in the evenings, making it a fantastic spot to hang out and enjoy a beautiful sunset on a warm night in the Caribbean. If you've got young kids, they are going to love the little water play area out here next to the two main pools. And notice that Royal Caribbean has lifeguards stationed out at all the swimming pools, even at the adults-only pool, so that if you let your guard down for a minute during your vacation and there's some incident in the pool with one of your family members, the lifeguards are there to prevent a tragedy. We are going to take a short break right now, but don't worry, there's a lot more to come. I'm just getting started. And when I come back, I'll show you another great thing that Royal Caribbean did during their $115 million renovation of Navigator of the Seas. I think it was the most brilliant move I've seen by a cruise line since Carnival came up with Guy's Burger Joint. I've been telling you all about how Royal Caribbean's $115 million renovation of Navigator of the Seas has vastly improved the pool deck on Deck 11, making it one of the best I've seen. Next to the pool on Navigator of the Seas, you'll find El Loco Fresh, a casual Mexican buffet restaurant that was a huge hit with all the people out by the pool. I'm from California. Mexican food is hugely popular here. I've been shaking my head for years at how cruise lines have mostly missed the Mexican food trend and don't offer anywhere near enough Mexican food. Royal Caribbean, I think, made a very smart move with El Loco Fresh, serving casual Mexican food buffet style and at no additional charge. It's the perfect casual lunch or snack for all the people relaxing out on the pool deck. Another food option out by the pool is Johnny Rockets Express. It's a burger joint based on 1950s diner-style restaurants. I think Royal Caribbean made a great move by putting Johnny Rockets right next to the pool, just like Carnival does with Guy's Burger Joint. But... I also think Royal Caribbean is making a huge mistake by charging extra for the food at Johnny Rockets. With Carnival giving away their far better tasting burgers out by the pool, I just don't think it's a good move for Royal Caribbean to charge extra for Johnny Rockets. If you've got kids, the big new feature on Navigator of the Seas that they're going to love is the water slides. There are two of them. My favorite is called the Blaster. It's a raft-type water slide, kind of like a much more thrilling version of Disney's Aqueduct Raft Slide. Two people can fit in the raft, or you can ride solo either way. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me use my GoPro on the water slide, so I'm going to have to use some of Royal Caribbean's stock footage here to give you an idea of how fun of a ride this really is. <laughs> did something really smart when they designed this new raft slide for Navigator of the Seas. Three years ago, I was on Liberty of the Seas after they installed a new raft water slide there. And on Liberty, you have to haul the raft up the stairs with you. That's not that hard if you're an adult, but not as easy for some of the kids. Royal Caribbean must have learned from that experience because here on Navigator of the Seas, there's a special lifting system just for the rafts that delivers them up to the beginning of the ride. The other new water slide they added during the recent renovation uses a mat rather than a raft. Again, they wouldn't let me take my GoPro on it, so I have to use their stock footage here. You lie down head first on the mat, and going through a water slide head first really adds a level of intensity to it. They will let young kids ride it, but even adults seem to really enjoy this ride, which is known as Riptide. Here's a little time-lapse video of our arrival in Cozumel. The weather was cloudy, and there were bands of rain moving through the area. I thought it was kind of funny that right as soon as we docked at the pier, it started to rain. 
And I felt bad for people that had signed up for early shore excursions because there was a lot of rain for an hour or two after we docked. But the weather did eventually clear up, and by the afternoon, it was sunny and warm, just like everybody wanted it to be. Royal Caribbean has their own pier at Cozumel, and right at the end of the pier is a Margaritaville restaurant, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company restaurant, a Senior Frogs, and several other places to eat and drink, all within easy walking distance. I was especially impressed that Bubba Gump's has a little area where you can swim and play on these inflatable water toys. And this is a time lapse of our departure from Cozumel. A short time later, we got a nice look at the Disney Fantasy, which was leaving Cozumel at the same time. I had the pleasure of meeting one of the passengers on the ship who is a bit of a celebrity, at least to a cruise ship fanatic like me. His name is Mario, everyone calls him Super Mario, and he lives on Royal Caribbean ships full-time, literally. He saved up enough money over his lifetime that he can now afford to just live on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. My friend Alana interviewed Mario quite extensively during a cruise a couple of months ago. If you want to find out what life is like for Mario living on a cruise ship full-time, follow the link up at the top of the screen to watch part of Alana's interview with him. The entertainment on Navigator of the Seas was pretty good. Not quite as great as what you'd get on an Oasis-class or Quantum-class Royal Caribbean ship, but still good. This guy was really great. His name is Joel Mason, and he was the headline entertainer one night. A super talented musician, but also funny as heck. I really enjoyed his sense of humor and his music. The ship has a real ice skating rink, and they have a show featuring former Olympic class ice skaters. That was really good. The ice skating rink converts to a big stage for audience participation game shows on some nights. This was a Battle of the Sexes game show. You know, I've noticed that the cruise directors on Royal Caribbean always promote these Battle of the Sexes shows by saying that the females have won every time for the last three weeks. And then you go to the show and quite often, oh, it's a miracle, the guys somehow ended up winning. That's still funny to watch, though, even though they always tell that little lie to create some extra drama. Like many cruise ships have, there was a Filipino cover band on Navigator of the Seas. Here they are playing in the Royal Promenade one night. And the ship's big band that normally plays during the shows in the Royal Theater also put on a show one night in the Royal Promenade with a big horn section. I liked it. We will take another quick break now, and when I come back, I'm going to show you something cool about this class of ships that's very rare on cruise ships these days, and it has a little connection with the movie Titanic. A very nice feature of this class of Royal Caribbean ship is that passengers have access to the bow of the ship. On most cruise ships, the bow of the ship is a crew-only area, but on Navigator of the Seas and her sister ships, you just walk out to the promenade area on deck four under the lifeboats, look for this set of stairs at the front end of the ship, and they will lead you up to the bow. You've got about a 270-degree view from up here, and I wonder how many people standing here at the bow have recreated that famous scene from Titanic Another cool thing I've always liked about Royal Caribbean ships is that when you enter the elevators, the day of the week is shown on the carpet. It's easy to lose track when you're on vacation. The upper deck of the ship, with three pools and five jacuzzis, plus two awesome water slides, is the center of activity during the day, but at night, the action shifts down to the interior of the ship in the Royal Promenade, running the length of Deck 5. It's laid out a lot like an indoor shopping mall, and there are some shops here, but also a lot of bars and restaurants. 
The Bamboo Room is a fun new bar that was added during the recent renovation. They have a lot of entertainment here in the Royal Promenade in the evenings. I was a disc jockey back in the 1970s, and I love the old 70s disco music. Royal Caribbean always has a disco night that's a lot of fun, and I always look forward to it. The music is all copyrighted, so I can't include any of it here in my video. Sorry. You may have figured out that they were playing YMCA at this point, and the crowd was totally into it. It was fun. And at midnight, they did a balloon drop that everyone seemed to get a big kick out of. Anyone that went to bed early on this night really missed out on a fun party. If you like a cruise ship with good entertainment and plenty of things to do at night, Navigator of the Seas is an excellent choice. That footage a minute ago of the people dancing to YMCA without me being able to play YMCA on the soundtrack due to copyrights, it reminds me of another fun night on Navigator of the Seas. They had a silent disco. Back in my glory days in the 70s, there was no such thing as a silent disco, but I guess this is the way the kids do it now, right? Wireless headphones, hundreds of them. Everybody's enjoying the music, but if you pop those headphones off for a minute... It all seems a little silly without the music. The guy with the microphone there is Corey, the cruise director on Navigator of the Seas. Now, I know he looks kind of like a nerd, but he actually did okay. He's no John Heald or Jamie D, the gold standard in cruise directors, but he's got a nice voice and he did fine. Let's talk about the food on Navigator of the Seas. My wife and I are buffet people. We almost never eat in the main dining room of a cruise ship. We eat most of our meals in the ship's buffet restaurant, plus an occasional dinner in some specialty restaurant. I'm going to just run the camera past all of the choices that were available at the dinner buffet on Navigator of the Seas on this particular night. It was incredible in terms of the variety of food that they offered. I've been on 49 cruises so far, and I'm not sure I've ever seen this many different food choices in a cruise ship buffet. Carnival's dinner buffet pales in comparison to what you see here in the dinner buffet on Navigator of the Seas. And MSC Seaside's dinner buffet? Oh my gosh, that was the lamest buffet I've ever seen. But this one on Navigator of the Seas, there were so many food choices, it was world class. They even served complimentary ice cream at the dinner buffet. My wife liked that at lunchtime, the buffet had a gluten-free section, but oddly it was nowhere to be found at dinner. I don't know why. And while the dinner buffet really impressed me, the breakfast buffet, not as much. I like a good omelet for breakfast, but their omelet chef overcooked them a bit. And the little square hash brown potato patties... That strikes me as something you'd get at McDonald's. I was hoping for something better. I did really appreciate the helpful attitude of the staff in the buffet. They were totally willing to help us out with some special requests. I had them find some gluten-free bread for my wife and toast it. And I had them warm up a croissant for me. A room temperature croissant just doesn't do it for me. And they seemed happy to take care of that for me. I also really like that the entrance to the restaurant is lined with hand wash stations and there's an employee station there to make sure that everyone washes their hands before entering. The other cruise lines should definitely copy this idea. The best meal of the whole cruise was at the steakhouse, Chops Grill. My wife had a gigantic piece of grilled salmon, and I had a very tasty and perfectly cooked New York strip steak. So far, I've told you about a lot of great features that we enjoyed on Navigator of the Seas, but to be honest, our cruise wasn't completely perfect. We're going to take one last short break, and when I come back, I'll tell you about the two major fails that we witnessed during our cruise. 
a big new feature in the Royal Promenade that they added during the recent renovation, and which I was really looking forward to experiencing, was Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade. They serve casual meals here for an additional charge, and we actually ate here on two different days because there were two items on the menu I was looking forward to trying. The Playmakers Burger and the Nachos. Plus, my wife wanted to try their wings. And while I did enjoy the burger, and especially the thick steak fries they serve along with it, the nachos were horrible, and it was all I could do to eat about a quarter of a serving before abandoning them. I think Royal Caribbean needs to send someone over to one of Guy Fieri's Pig and Anchor restaurants on Carnival to learn how to make a much more delicious plate of nachos. And the service at Playmakers was horrible, too. I was so surprised. I don't normally find service this bad on a cruise ship. Both times we came to Playmakers for a meal, we waited for 10 minutes at our table and never had a waiter even acknowledge us. Both times I had to flag someone down to get some help and put in an order for food and drinks. And on one of the visits, we sat for 15 minutes after we finished our meal before I finally couldn't stand it any longer and flagged down someone to find our waiter and bring us our check. And the other thing about Playmakers that didn't seem right to me was the type of televised sports they show on all those TVs. The only channels that they offer are the various ESPN networks. So there was tennis, soccer, cricket. If you like those, it's great. There was some college football, but it seemed like the wrong mix of sports to me. And besides not showing the games that people would really be interested in, the satellite reception was bad. Really hard to watch with a lot of dropped video frames. For me, Playmakers was a fail. Another huge fail on my cruise on Navigator of the Seas was the internet service, which was a surprise because Royal Caribbean normally has really good internet from the O3B satellite network. But on our five-day cruise, they never once connected to the O3B satellites, as far as I could tell. I ran numerous speed tests every day of the cruise. I never saw a ping time less than 600 milliseconds, which tells me they were using a C-band satellite the whole time. If they had been connected to the O3B network, the ping times would have been way under 200 milliseconds. I went down and talked to the internet manager two different times to make sure that he was aware of what was going on. He didn't seem to care much. While the recent $115 million renovation of Navigator of the Seas did do great things up on the pool deck and inside on the Royal Promenade, the cabins are still what you would expect on a 17-year-old cruise ship. Our balcony cabin wasn't bad, but it just didn't have things like USB charging ports or electrical outlets by the bed or dual closets like you'd find on newer Royal Caribbean ships. I'm going to do a separate video, which will be a full tour of our balcony cabin. That'll be coming about a week after I post this video. So if you don't see a link to it up in the top corner of the screen right about now, that means I'm still working on it. We did have a really good cabin steward. A bad cabin steward cleans the cabins in order from one end of his section to the other on his schedule. A great cabin steward like we had on this ship doesn't clean their rooms in order. He watches for when you leave the cabin, and he has the cabin all spiffed up before you return. I already mentioned that Hurricane Dorian was a good thing for us, turning our three-day cruise into a five-day cruise at the three-day price, but there were other nice hurricane benefits, too. Royal Caribbean knew that most of the passengers had booked this cruise in order to visit their private island at Coco Cay in the Bahamas, and because they weren't able to get us to Coco Cay, they gave us about $300 in credit towards a future cruise. And there was one other thing. A lot of people just outright canceled this cruise, so the ship was a lot less crowded than normal. Sometimes there are as many as 4,000 passengers aboard Navigator of the Seas, but with all the cancellations due to the hurricane, this week we shared the ship with just 2,400 guests. And because I totally love a quiet, uncrowded cruise, the day the ship visited Costa Maya 
We just stayed on board while most of the other passengers went ashore. It was like being a billionaire with my own yacht. We totally loved spending the morning at the solarium pool and having it pretty much to ourselves for several hours. Speaking of living like a big shot, before we wrap this up, I should mention our flight to Florida in first class on a Boeing 777. Oh my, I love traveling like this. Those big comfortable pods are so much better than sitting three seats across like you do on a lot of flights. I like having places to store things and being able to recline the seat back or extend a footrest. And I was able to monitor the progress of the hurricane as it approached Florida thanks to the great entertainment system that they had on this American Airlines 777. The round-trip first-class coast-to-coast flight literally cost us more than the entire cruise did, but I think it was worth it. All airplanes should be this comfortable. All flights should be this good. Five days of cruising in the Western Caribbean was all it took for Hurricane Dorian to move past the area. By the time we sailed into the port of Miami in the pre-dawn hours of September 4th, the port was open for business again, and Hurricane Dorian was moving on towards South Carolina. These pictures here are a bit dark because it was really early in the morning when we pulled in, but I got one last time-lapse video as the ship did a 180-degree turn in the turning basin just before we docked. I mentioned, maybe a few times too many, that this was our 49th cruise. And if you're wondering what we've got lined up for big number 50, that one's going to be in The Haven on Norwegian Joy from Southern California, driving distance from our house. I'll be looking forward to that one for the next few months. Until then, I'll be doing a lot of model train videos, perhaps an occasional puppy video, and probably telling you more about the two group cruises that we've got coming up. How'd you like to go with me for a Caribbean cruise on Carnival's upcoming new ship, the Mardi Gras? Or maybe you'd like to come along on a cruise to Alaska with us next summer. You'll find details on my website at jimzim.net. That is the full story of our cruise on Navigator of the Seas. Not the best cruise we've ever been on, but I'd give it a solid 8 on a 10 scale, I think. And I suspect that if we had made it to Coco Cay, and I could have had fun on all those water slides, it probably would have made up for a few of the negatives and raised my score up to a 9, which is pretty great for an inexpensive cruise, especially if you live close enough to just drive to the port for the weekend. If you're interested in booking a cruise on Navigator of the Seas or any cruise ship on any cruise line, feel free to use the services of my travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher. Her services cost you nothing at all. Her fees are paid for by the cruise lines. She can take care of all the little details that you should be paying attention to when you book a cruise. She can help prevent some of those rookie cruiser mistakes that people make. And I've always found her super easy to work with. I'm putting links up on the screen right now to a couple of my other videos that I think you'd enjoy. Click on one to watch that video. And if you liked this video, please leave a comment. I enjoy reading those. And also hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that this is a good video that they should recommend to other people. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching.